What is up everyone? Welcome to the best makeup of the year. I lovingly call these the Jammy Awards, similar to the Grammys, uh, because my original username was Jam Beauty 89 Those are my initials, blah, blah, blah. That's how it got started, but this is my best makeup of 2021. I had to narrow this down, y'all, because there were so many, and we're gonna do it by category. You're gonna see a lot of these on my face. I'm wearing all Jammy Award winners on my face today and yeah links will be below if you do purchase anything through the use of links that I put in my description box it does support my channel I do make a small commission on it please feel free to use the links if you want please feel free to search for these on your own if you want to but I like to mention that from time to time so let's just dive right on in you guys it's gonna be a long one I just made some of that Javelia mocha coffee that's got like it basically is like hot coffee it's like hot cocoa and coffee mix. That's exactly what it is, and it is delicious. Also stay tuned for a lifestyle version of this video where we do like kitchen favorites, clothing favorites, jewelry favorites, shoes, coffee, and all of it. I've already planned that one too, and I'm really excited. So stay tuned for that one. It's coming soon. Subscribe. Okay, let's get into the actual video. So we'll go in order of how I apply makeup. So let's start with face products. First thing I wanted to talk about are my favorite SPFs for your face. This is something I get a lot of like DMs about what my favorite is because I talk a lot about wearing sunscreen on my face every day and we really all should be. I mean, not all days are perfect. Obviously some days you just don't, but it is important. It helps with anti-aging as well. So with that in mind, I have two very different versions. They're both pricey, but they're just my favorites. And so one of them is the Elta MD UV Elements Broad Spectrum SPF 44. This brand is one that like my dermatologist sells this at her office. Like it is a very dermatological brand, if that makes sense. And it's really good. I like this one because it's tinted. And even though it's not gonna provide coverage the way like a foundation or something would, it does just kind of self-correct my skin just a little bit, which is nice. A lot of days I'll just wear this and a concealer I'm gonna mention and maybe something through my brows and that's it. And I like the way this makes my skin look and it works beautifully underneath other makeup as well. So if you're wearing this, then putting on foundation, etc., it does not pill up or get weird or greasy. It is beautiful. Another one I love is from Supergoop. This is no surprise if you've been around a while, which I'm sure some of you guys have. The glow screen is my favorite. It's super glowy and I always view this as a moisturizer, primer, and SPF all in one because it does it all. It moisturizes my skin, it provides sun protection, and it gives a glowy look to the skin. And again, it wears really well under makeup, which was kind of my stipulations between like how I was gonna pick my favorites. These are definitely the two I've used the most this year. Y'all know I have other favorites too, but those are like the top tier. All right, so foundation wise, one of my favorites is from Wet n Wild. It's their tinted hydrator. This I view as more of like I mean just what it says like a tinted moisturizer. It's not really a full-on foundation But it does have a little bit of coverage and it's got enough that I feel like it's worth taking the step of applying it You know how some tinted moisturizers you put on you're like I can't like I can't tell that you put anything on that was such a waste of that one minute of my life This one I feel like there's enough coverage that it feels like it's a worthy step to take Super inexpensive. It says it's got hyaluronic acid squalane I just really like it. The shade I have been wearing lately is Fair. And another one, and this is the one I'm wearing today, is from Estee Lauder. This is a cult classic that I kind of came back around to trying this year. It's the Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. Oh, <laughs> first of all, I swear to you, like seven or eight years ago when I first tried this, it was way, way more like, I felt like it was dry and full coverage, but like a little bit too much coverage for what I wanted. I don't know if they've changed it or I have just totally changed the way I apply things, what I like, because this is definitely medium to full coverage, but it's beautiful. Like, I feel like it sinks into the skin. It wears really nicely throughout the day. Like, I like the way my skin looks when I wear this. This is what I grabbed for to wear. I think I wore this one on Christmas Eve and then this other one I'm gonna mention on Christmas because they're kind of battling it out for first place. But I really like it. I wear the shade one and two Ecru. But a newer favorite, and I tried not to mention anything that was too new to me, like I just tried in the past month. This may be the only exception. I'm kind of trying to see. I think this is the only exception because it is that good. Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. This makes my skin, again, it's very similar look to the Estee Lauder. So similar to what you're seeing here, 
I'll link a video where I tried this for the first time last month if you want to see this in action and you'll just see. You're going to see what I see, okay? I don't know how else to explain it. This is absolutely, absolutely one of the most stunning foundations I've ever tried. I don't know what else to say, <laughs> like it's so good. So medium to full coverage, definitely I would say similar look, but this one has just that little bit more radiance. A primer, I meant to mention before these, but that's okay. The only one I would mention is this. I really have been skipping primer the past really couple years. It's just, sometimes I'll put it on my nose, like a pore filling one, but I've just not felt like so strongly this year towards one primer, but this is one I have enjoyed. It's the Huda Beauty Glow Wish Multi Dew skin tint okay i think you're allowed like you're supposed to be able to use this alone and you'll see when i'm applying it here it does provide a little bit of coverage but it's just i don't i look like the tin man with just this on however it looks beautiful under foundation which is what i did today so i've been treating this more as a primer sometimes i'll mix it into a more higher coverage or more matte foundation and that works well too so I wanted to mention it because it, I haven't tried a glowy primer in a while that I felt is like, wow, like it really does make a difference when I use it. And this one does. You can still see a bit of the sheen through it, but it's not overwhelming once you put something on top. So concealer, uh, one that is just my favorite. If you saw my concealer declutter a couple weeks ago now, uh, this is just my favorite concealer. Again, from Shiseido, so the same brand as that foundation. It is their Synchro Skin self-refreshing concealer. It is the best concealer I've ever used. When it inevitably, like every concealer, will sink a little bit into your fine lines, you can just tap it into place and it just like resets itself. It is beautiful, amazing. I would call it like a medium coverage concealer. It's gonna cover a decent amount and I love it. I love it so much. I need to repurchase it because that one is almost gone. But another one, and this is the one I'm actually wearing today that I really, really think is good but it's a little harder, it's a way better price point than that one, but it's a little harder to get your hands on. Catrice used to be sold at Ulta and they recently are no longer being sold there, but it's the True Skin High Cover Concealer. I have seen this on Amazon and I think I saw most of the shades there, so I can link that link if that's easier for you to order from. This stuff is gorgeous. I love how like when I apply it, it feels like cushy, like it's just a concealer that feels like cushiony and it blends in super quickly. Uh, I just have no notes. This is definitely higher coverage. Like I feel very bright on my under eye today because of this, which is really nice because I mean, a lot of the times that's what we want. We want to look a little more awake. So I really like it. I have the shade 010 Cool Cashmere. And if you're curious, the Shiseido, I have the shade 103 Fair. I would definitely say the Catrice has more coverage than the Shiseido. So a lot of days, especially recently, like after the holidays and moving in, you know, that that like limbo period between Christmas and the new year, I was definitely wearing like virtually no makeup a lot of the days. And so instead of wearing absolutely nothing on my skin, I would usually throw on like a tinted SPF and this. This is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. I have it in the shade G10. This is something that grew on me more recently because it just so easily taps into that like area where for me, I've got a lot of blue and purple. And it just, I'll, I'll kind of rub it there really quickly. I'll rub it on the eyelid and it just makes everything look so much more evened out. So even though I'm really not wearing makeup really at all that day other than this, it really makes things look a lot more healthy. Like it makes my skin look healthier. So I just have to mention this because this has really like blown me away more recently when I discovered how it works best for me. So this is something now that if I ran out, I would definitely buy again. And that's kind of a lesson for me. A lot of my tastes have changed so much in the past four or five years, even the past just couple of years, that things that I'd tried long ago that I didn't like because it was either not enough coverage or too much coverage or whatever, now I've just got different tastes and retrying like the stretch concealer and retrying the Estee Lauder, I've discovered, oh wait, no, actually, now I really do like them. They really do work for me. Another favorite I've loved for a long time is the Bare Minerals Loose Powder Concealer. Don't let that intimidate you because to me, before I tried something like this, I was like, that sounds like too much work, like a loose powder, but it's just, for, it's concealer, it's got coverage, like it sounds scary. It's really not. I literally will take this sifter, open it up, tap a little bit into the lid, like literally, just a little bit more than that maybe. And then I just get my little Real Techniques setting brush, I get it on the brush, and you just tap it into that area. And you guys, this 
you could have the lowest coverage concealer and or just no other concealer on and you put this on it really does have coverage and it's just beautiful like it brightens it kind of flattens that area out it makes the staying power like it stays for a long time the one word of caution i would give you is just be careful about how much you use because if you go in heavy-handed with this it does have a little bit goes a long way it does have a lot of coverage for a powder a loose powder so knowing that if you go in heavy-handed it's gonna look crepey so just a light dusting of this is gonna do exactly what you want it to do i promise I need to like slow down. I can feel myself speeding up because I see how much more we have to talk about. All right, let's talk about powders. I only have two. One of them I have been loving as my powder foundation really all year long is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation. It's just pretty. It's not, it's still a mattifying powder, but it's not as mattifying as this one here, the L'Oreal Infallible. So same brand, but this just different. This one, I think they have similar amounts of coverage. This one might have a little bit more and it's definitely a little bit more matte. This one is more satin, so it's still gonna soak up some oil. It's got some coverage, so it's still gonna like, for me, my nose gets red. I can just take this on a brush and dust it there and it evens everything out, makes it all look uniform. I really, really have been loving this, so huge shout out, huge win for the drugstore. Then the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I know, I've watched a couple of other YouTubers' favorites of 2021 and this is in so many people's because it really does have this magical blurring effect when you apply it, especially to your T-zone. It just like, even not evens it out because it's not like a coverage product. It just, like any texture you have, it just kind of makes it look less lesser it lessens the texture i don't know what i'm saying all right so bronzer blush highlight and then we'll get into some eye stuff then some lips and then i've got some brushes and stuff that i think are amazing you guys need to try okay bronzer i just have two one cream and one powder this was the easiest decision for both of these for me the powder is still the l'oreal true match bronze it i this thing has a stranglehold it is my favorite i actually have like almost used one up this is my next one and this is one of the few products that I keep here and in my vanity at home because I, I would miss it if it were in one place and not the other. I just, and, and for me really, it's I think a tone thing. I think the tone of this for my skin is so perfect that I'm just drawn to it. It's easy to apply. I've been applying it with a more dense brush and it really is easy to get in those areas you want. And we'll talk about that brush in a sec from e.l.f. It's so good. Anyway, yeah, I just love it. I feel like it wears really well. It's easy to blend in once you've got it on. Some powder bronzers, I feel like you get them on your skin and they just like stick and you're like, oh crap. And you're trying to blend it and it gets patchier and patchier, you know? This doesn't do that. It just continues to blend for you. It's like a malleable powder. I know that makes no sense, but it kind of does. The cream one is similar. I like for similar reasons. It's from the brand Say. It's their Sun Melt Cream Bronzer. I have it in light bronze. This is just so easy. Again, it's so much more forgiving than other cream bronzers where I can apply it and stipple it onto the cheeks. I usually do it with the Eco Tools brush like this. I can like and I'll just stipple it on. And again, I could just be doing this and it just blends in so seamlessly. It doesn't look patchy or like too dark in one area. It really is the easiest cream bronzer I've ever, ever used. And again, it stays well too. So those are definitely, those were two of the easiest choices I've ever made. <laughs> All right, blush favorites. I have one cream and two powders. So one of them, the one I'm wearing today, really took me by surprise this year. It's from Pacifica which is a brand I've not really tried a lot from, just generally, you know. Oh my gosh, I just realized that my other light, I wondered why it looks so dark back there. Hold on. Man, you know the perfectionist in me is like, do I start over? But no, Jessica, just move along, move along. So this Pacifica one, not super expensive at all. Um, I don't even know, did I buy it at Target, like online? I have no, I think I bought it on Target.com. But it's the shade Camellia. This is the prettiest, most like satin looking beautiful blushes I've ever used. There's something magical about it that I just feel like I have a highlighter on today. I don't even need a highlighter with it. And it's not that this is glowy or luminous, but it just has this quality to it that just catches the light so beautifully. Oh my gosh. And it's this teeny tiny little, 
It's so cute. But I also really like this Milani blush. It's their rose powder blushes. I think the quality of these is amazing. These have been out for a long time. But I discovered the shade Romantic Rose and that is what I've fallen in love with. Obviously I have a certain color that I like for my cheeks because these are all very similar. But I would say if you find any shade in this range, they're beautifully pigmented, they last really well, they're easy to apply, and they're just pretty. I mean, just straight up pretty. And then the cream blush, and this was hard because there were like three or four that I just love. I talk about all the time. But this is really the one I've been thinking about a lot and using a lot. It's the Stila Convertible Colors. I have Peony and Lilium. Don't go off swatches you see on Ulta's site for these because they look nothing like what they look like in person. I would go to like various blogs. This one is Peony here, and this one is Lilium. Lilium's a little bit pinker. They're very, very similar. But the reason these are so amazing is that they're so creamy and emollient, but they're so easy to blend. So I could just get them on my finger and tap it in a circle and just keep tapping and it just like perfectly spreads. It doesn't look weird like there's like a harsh line where you put it. You can do it with a brush, you can do it with a sponge. Like these are so easy and beautiful and I think the packaging is so pretty. I don't know who I thought I was trying to get by without having like any sort of like washcloth or makeup wipe near me. So highlight, I have two. They're both powder. I really have not felt so, so strongly about a cream highlighter this year. Um, oh my gosh, that's not true. Wait, where is that? I just now thought of the one and now I'm like, where is that? Because I didn't see it at home either. But it's one from Flower Beauty. It's their Day Glow. And it is such, I cannot believe I almost didn't mention that. It is such a pretty cream highlighter. Again, not super expensive. And you can just dip your finger in it and tap it and it's just, mmm. That is a good one. So I'll link that one below because I freaking love that stuff. I have got to find that stuff. But I also really like in the powder realm, and this is what I'm wearing today, this Milani Baked Highlighter in 110 Dolce Perla. I, this is <laughs> so freaking pretty. And this is one that when I wear it, I get a lot of compliments like, ooh, your highlighter looks nice. I'm like, thank you. It's Milani, baby, you can own it too. It's just so beautiful. I feel like it just catches the light nicely and it's very effortless. I never feel like I have to be too careful. I mean, I will say if you just keep packing this on, it's just gonna get glowier and glowier, but it's just beautiful. If you want one that's slightly toned down from that, I mention this a lot and I never hear other people, but it is one of my favorite highlighters. It's from Laura Mercier and it's their Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Highlight 01. The, it's similar-ish. Let me swatch these next to each other because now I'm kind of curious. I've never thought about these being dupes and I'm starting to think... <laughs> I'm working on a dupes video like as we speak to film very soon and I thought I was done. I already know what dupes I'm going to mention. I'm starting to think... These are very similar formulas. The color is not exact. No wonder I really like that one and I really like that. They're basically like the same formula. I think maybe, maybe the Laura Mercier is slightly toned down, but it is so slight, you guys. So love both of them. You can certainly save the money and get the Milani. Also subscribe, stay tuned, because I've got a drugstore dupes video coming up that is very good. That may be in it, we'll see. And I do those videos all the time. So if you're new to my channel, maybe this is one of the first videos you're watching of mine, I'll link my drugstore dupes playlist. I do new like groupings of drugstore dupes that I found every, I would say every other month. Sometimes every month, it kind of depends. So let's move into eyes. So the first thing that I have kind of rediscovered, I feel like this was a year of rediscovery for me, is the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. I have definitely in the past few months specifically been doing a lot less eyeshadow and more just putting something on my eyes like this to just kind of even everything out then throwing on liner and mascara and calling it a day. And what's funny, I have never gotten more compliments from my husband than when I've done that. What does that mean? I find that interesting, but every time, like once I started doing this, it'd be multiple times a week, he'd be like, I really like your makeup today. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> and then I'd be like, what am I wearing today, you know? But it's usually when I'm doing this, so I just find that very interesting. But I love this. Painterly is a shade that works for me. They have other shades, obviously. And so I typically will wear this alone, but I also will sometimes, if I'm feeling extra, put this on, then put shadow on, like use this as an eye primer. And it does a great job as that. I just don't typically use eye primer, but it is awesome. Love, love this stuff. Like, man, what a rediscovery. I feel like my lipstick is getting more and more weird as I'm drinking more and more coffee and talking more. <laughs> all right, I'm so sorry. We have four palettes to talk about, but they're all, 
I shouldn't say they're all very different, but they're all pretty different and they're different price points too. And I couldn't, I couldn't take one of these out. Okay. So first love of the year is from Wet n Wild. This is their color icon palette in Nude Awakening. Wet n Wild, I've been waiting for years for you to make this palette. This is just beautiful. If you've ever tried Wet n Wild shadows, they're just one of those things like that are just, they've been good for so many years and the price point has always been so reasonable. It's amazing. So I love this. The shimmers in this are stunning. The mattes blend so easily. Like it is just for me very much a perfect palette. It's got it all. So that has definitely been a favorite. On the total opposite end of the like price spectrum, a favorite, and I've loved this for years, is the Charlotte Tilbury Darling Palette. That's what I'm wearing today. I just lightly went in with this second shade in. It's my favorite. I'm about to hit pan on it. I'm like, no. All over the lid and then this uh, third shade in just kind of into the crease. And yeah, it just, you can do a really nice wash. Like this is obviously a very light wash of color, but you can definitely get a little more dramatic with it. I just tend to blend it away like watercolors, you know? Another favorite that so surprised me when I did that Ulta like full face trying all Ulta brand stuff. Cause you know the Ulta brand is always like, buy two, get 18 free. Like also it's always on sale, like crazy sale. I think it's usually like buy two, get one free or buy one, get whatever. Anyway, it's always on sale. And I'm like, I have not tried a lot. Like what's actually good. So if you want to know, check out that video. But this is definitely one of the winners from that video. It's their everyday faves palette. Very similar to the wet and wild. I mean, it's a neutral palette. Hmm, baby, it's so good, you guys, it's so good. So uh, again, the shimmers, the mattes, everything blends easily, super pigmented. Love that it's got a big mirror. It's not a giant palette, like it's a good size. Now you really don't need both, so you could certainly save some more money and get the Wet n Wild, but like if you were trying to take advantage of one of those Ulta sales, I highly recommend that palette. And then I also like the Tarte, Tartlet Juicy Palette. This is very much like a pink palette. And I just like it. I love the shadows. I tend to like Tarte palettes when I try them. Unless it's like a limited edition. A lot of their limited edition palettes are just not as high quality. But I just really enjoyed this. Again, everything's easy to work with and the color story is just a little different from a lot of what I already have. And the packaging is really cute. Wow, this product here. And I have it on my lid. And if you're wondering like, what is that like shimmer? It's this. And I have a lot to say about this. So this is from Makeup by Mario. It is the Master Crystal Reflector. It says it's a highlighter. I've never used it as a highlighter. I don't think I would like it as a highlighter. But when I've watched him, the makeup artist Mario, use this, he used it on the eyes. And he described it as, it gives this almost wet looking sheen to the eye. And it does. However, this thing has broken a thousand times. Like I have repressed it because it is so soft. So I just deal with it, honestly. I literally just shut this and I try to keep it as clean as possible. I'll press it down when I feel like it, but it's worth it because I've not found anything that does what this does, where it can look so slight almost, but it's that extra special something that you see on someone that you're like, what is that? Like, is that just an eyeshadow? Like, what is that? This is magic. It's expensive, but you can use it with any eyeshadow look. You can wear it alone. Like this is beautiful just over the MAC Painterly paint pot with like a thick wing and mascara. Oh my gosh. So I like the shade Quartz. I've tried the rose gold one and it was not, it didn't have the same effect, which is a bummer because color wise, I'd much prefer the rose gold. This looks white. It doesn't go on white. Like it is just stunning. So I love it so much. I could not have done this video without mentioning that gem. I might one day literally just like depot that into like a little pot so it can be as loose as it wants to be in there, you know? Liner was pretty easy for me. I, the <laughs> Makeup by Mario again, the Makeup by Mario Perfect Brown Eyeliner. Stay with me because some of you guys pulled back when you heard brown eyeliner. I did not like brown eyeliner. I have been a black eyeliner girl my whole life, always. I am definitely an eyeliner person. Like I love a nice thick line, especially like on the top lashes. This stuff I'll put like in the waterline there and I don't want it to transfer down just because of the way I like to do my makeup. It does not budge, you guys, it does not budge. Now I have tried and I have right here the black version of it and it is not as good as the brown. It transfers a little bit more, like it's still really, really good, but the brown is better and it's so dark you cannot tell that it's brown. So don't let that like dissuade you from getting it but an amazing waterline eyeliner. I also love that it's creamy enough that when you first apply it, 
a lot of times I will just apply it and then they have this little brush on the other end and I'll just smudge it out and it looks so like runway chic, like pretty and it's really easy. So this I've actually used up the other one and this is a new one. I It's pretty rare that I go through an eyeliner that quickly. This one is so good, so highly recommend. My favorite liquid liner, which I put on top of this today to kind of fill it out and do like the wing, is the Physicians Formula Eye Booster one, but it's the waterproof. The regular kind of smears on me, but the waterproof is magic. Plus, the waterproof has like these like water droplets on it, which I think is just kind of cute. So these have like, again, these were easy choices for me to make this year. Other easy choices for brows, the e.l.f. Wow Brow has wowed me, if I do say so myself. It's just so easy to use. Now, if you have a lot to fill in, you probably won't like this because I do feel like it's a little less pigmented than other brow products out there, but that's why I like this. Like that's the magic of this for me. So I have it in, I think, neutral brown. I have repurchased this twice now, so I've gone through three this year. Like I just, but it's so easy to just brush through the brows. That's pretty much all I do anymore, period, is this. And then my other brow favorite is still the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. This stuff holds your brows in place. Like I always feel like, especially the ends of my brows tend to like, if something touches it, it just like sticks out or up. These hold it in place so well, these, this. I love it, I've repurchased, will continue. It's just my favorite. And two mascaras. Listen, I could talk, I literally had six mascaras in my hand. I'm like, no, no, Jess, you have got to narrow it down. Like what genuinely were the mascaras this year that just swept you off your feet? And there are a lot, but these are the two I'm going with because I they just are so amazing. So I really love the number seven full 360 ultra mascara. These two that I'm mentioning, I'm realizing are the only two I repurchased this year versus other ones I really liked but I didn't end up repurchasing yet. These were two that I liked enough that as it dried out, I bought it again. This one from number seven that I just mentioned is just beautiful volume, it stays. I feel like it holds the curl well. The brush, like the wand can be a little intimidating. It is a big daddy. <laughs> and I do feel like the second coat is where the, it, it looks beautiful on the first coat but the second coat is where the magic happens after you let it dry for a bit. But I just think it is a pretty long wearing concealer, nope mascara yeah <laughs> and yeah i love the way it makes my lashes look the other favorite is the elf lash it loud mascara this is definitely definitely the first mascara from elf i've ever tried that i liked <laughs> it really is i've not i've never been impressed with their mascaras but this one has amazing volume the wand is very different from that number seven it's not First of all, this is more like synthetic, like plasticky. I definitely poke my eyes with this one multiple times, so beware, you know. But I feel like it's so easy. Like this one, I feel like the number seven, you might get a clump or two and I'll just brush through them real fast because I just love the way it looks, I don't care. But if you know clumps are gonna drive you nuts, I would get the e.l.f. because it's still going to volumize like crazy and curl. But because of the brush, clumping is very rare with this. So. Both amazing, the e.l.f. one's a little bit cheaper, but number seven's not super expensive either. Both amazing. Did I already say that? Let's start with lip liner. I'm only gonna mention one line, and you can say it with me, the Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liners. These are like 12 bucks, which compared to some drugstore liners is a little more expensive, but this is gonna last you a long time. And these are so incredible. They have a lot of different shades. I have the red one that is called It's Cherry, number 11. I have wore this in a recent video alone like I just lined my lips and then filled it in it looked like a bomb red lipstick and it was just this it's so beautiful and these are creamy enough that they'll still stay in place but they're creamy enough to like be comfortable on the lips like they're not dry I'm wearing today my ultimate favorite number four creme de la creme I wear it constantly this is definitely my most used lip liner this year uh, because it's just such an easy everyday nude but I also really like rose wine number three it's a little bit pinker than creme de la creme all of these are amazing. They have other shades. If you have shades of this you love that you'd recommend, let me know because I would totally buy more. They're so good. They are retractable. So um, you can just, you know, do that. You don't have to sharpen it. And on the back, there's a little shaper. So if you want it to be pointed again, you can certainly get it back to that shape. So love it. Lipstick, I am only gonna mention one. Well, one and then another one, but it's not fully a lipstick. You'll see what I mean. I'm gonna mention the Maybelline Cream Lipsticks. I've loved these for years. I feel like they don't get enough love. They are so freaking good. The one I'm wearing today is in Flush Punch. I, this might've been the one that started it all for me. Like this was the original one I loved. 
because again, it's just such a pretty everyday pink. That's what I'm wearing. It is comfortable. It stays in place pretty well. I mean, it is a little more moisturizing. So like I said, I was drinking coffee, like a little bit would kind of, but that I feel like I would feel that with any lipstick unless I'm wearing like a full on dried down liquid lipstick, you know? So they're comfy. I always say the cream line of these because they have other ones in this similar packaging from Maybelline. I, I don't know exactly what they have, but I think they have like a matte line, like a glitter or luster line. I don't know. The cream line is the one that I think is just stellar. So the other shade I have is Warm Me Up, which is a little, little bit deeper, just a little bit though, than Flush Punch. And then I also have one from their Shine line called Spicy Mauve that I just wanted to give a little shout out because if you want it to be even more moisturizing, this is a good line for that because it's very similar, but it definitely has a little more slip to it. The other lipstick I'm gonna mention is more of like a balmy lipstick, you know what I mean? And it's from Gucci, and it was like one of the biggest splurges I've ever made on myself, makeup wise, and I just love it. I just love it so much. It's definitely a purse lipstick. It's super comfy to wear. I don't need a mirror to apply it, and so would I buy this again? Yeah. <laughs> Gloss wise, I love the Buxom lip glosses, any shade y'all, any, any shade, any line. If you are someone like me that you have lined lips and they kind of drive you nuts from time to time, this plumps them just enough and the tingles slight, it's there. So if a tingles at all is gonna bother you, then I wouldn't get these. But it's not so much like the Fenty Heat tingle or like the Milani XXXL, that tingle kills me. This one is not like that but they're just gorgeous. I would recommend going for one that has glitter in it. And I know that sounds like, whoa, I'm telling you, you put it on any sort of like lipstick or anything and it just makes your lips look so luscious and beautiful and they catch the light beautifully. My favorite is the shade Celeste. Um, this is one called Autumn. I think it was limited edition. They might still sell it. Um, but Celeste is definitely a favorite. I also like Claire, although I tried to link this the other day and I feel like they're not selling it anymore. But the other gloss I fell in love with is from Maybelline and it's their lifter glosses. I have four of them. I don't think I had realized how many of these I had. I love them. So I have three that are kind of similar and then one that I recommend to everyone in the shade Pearl because it looks like, of course, it's gonna be white, but it just goes on kind of clear, but it has that beautiful sheen to it. Now, I think this says it's supposed to be like kind of plumping Maybe it never makes that full on claim, but it's definitely not. Like it doesn't have a tingle, but they make your lips look so pretty. It doesn't really matter. I think out of these, my favorite is Moon. But again, they're so similar, but Moon has that glitter in it too. That's really, really pretty. So these glosses just make your lips look full and pretty and they're comfy. So I just have a couple of tools to mention, like brushes that I want you to listen up because if you find good brushes for certain things, I'll explain what I mean it will transform your makeup application game, I promise you. And I've been realizing that lately more than ever. So one brush I love is from e.l.f. It's their foundation blurring brush. This is amazing. You can use it for cream bronzer. I've used it for that, but I also love it for powder bronzer like that L'Oreal one. And today I just applied that bronzer with this and it just is so even because this brush is so soft, you can really like blend things in with it but it's not disrupting the makeup underneath. So I love, love this. Another favorite is this EcoTools blush brush. I, I, I feel like I bought it on a whim, but there's something about the shape of this that is so perfect where I can just get with the blush, just get it right on the end of it and just go boom, boom, and it just perfectly applies it. And then I'll just kind of sweep, sweep, and it's done. Like this is, a beautiful blush brush. Sephora Pro brush, this is their number 56. I finally repurchased this in their like new line that they just relaunched a year or two ago. This is supposed to be for foundation. I like it for concealer because it's so fast to just boop, 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 boop. I actually use a different brush to apply that I actually thought was this brush. And anyway, it doesn't matter. This one is incredible and highly recommend. If you like a smaller foundation brush, it would be good for that, but I just feel like it's a little small to do your whole face. Oh my gosh, and it's so good for concealer, you guys. And then one from Ulta. This is my favorite powder brush, man. It's the Ulta Powder Number 20 brush. It's really big, but it's not so round and circular. It's still kind of pulled in, but it's still fluffy, so I love just applying powder with it. It's so easy, like, it's soft, and I really like the handle. 
it just feels good to hold. And the other tool I wanted to mention, I found on Amazon, so I don't even know if they still make this like in stores. If you are like me, with certain liquid liners, especially ones I don't love, I'll struggle to get a wing and then it's like jagged and weird. And I'm like, dang it. These have been amazing. So this is this Maybelline pen called the Master Fixer. And there's little replacement heads there. And the little one here looks like a literal Crayola marker, you know? <laughs> but it has makeup remover in it. So you can literally go doop, doop, doop and clean up your wing. You can get like precise lines. And then what I'll typically do to make this one last longer is I'll just wipe it off right after I use it so there's not a bunch of like liner and makeup on it. You can use it like if you get dots of stuff, you can kind of use it to remove that if you want. And then obviously you might have to go back in and fix it with makeup, but still, this is amazing. It was like 10-ish dollars on Amazon. I have not found this in stores. I used to use the e.l.f. makeup removing pen, but I can't find that anywhere. I think they discontinued it. So this might be better anyway because it has the replacement heads. I think that's so cool. So wanted to mention it, really, really good. You may notice I did not mention a setting spray or a loose powder. I just, I don't, I haven't been using those enough this year to feel that strongly one way or another. I really haven't. I mean, I could share some favorites here, but I'm just not gonna be your go-to gal for that right now because I just don't use them a lot. So. I hope this was fun, enjoyable, helpful. If you are new, please subscribe. It helps me out so much. I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. Like I said, I do drugstore dupes. You can check out that playlist. If you wanna save some money and just see some comparisons on some amazing products that are out there. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'm so excited for 2022. For this Jammy Awards, like best of 2021 series, I will have, like I said, a lifestyle version of this coming up. I also have other, like I have skincare, hair care, and stuff like that. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that in a separate video or if I'm gonna include that in the lifestyle one and just do it all together. We'll see what happens because I haven't filmed it yet. <laughs> but I'm also planning to do a worst makeup of 2021 and I have a weirdly high amount of products. <laughs> so if you wanna watch that, uh, I can't wait to film it. I will have that one coming up soon as well. And other than that, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.